Hello Hastings, welcome to In Studio. I am Tom Wright and today uh, we're about to reveal to you a big study that was done um, to measure the impact of the arts in this community and I am with Sheila Smith, the Executive Director for Minnesota Citizens for the Arts. I'm here to talk all about the, uh, the study and what they found and how it came up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so Sheila, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Sheila here, I gotta say, I gotta note, she drove all the way from St. Paul to down here and she's gotta go, go all the way back up to Forest Lake. So she made a drive to make this possible, make it work. So I appreciate that. My pleasure. Really appreciate that. Well, so Sheila, we have a, a PowerPoint here um, th that you're gonna go through and present uh, the findings. Before we get into that though, tell us about uh, Minnesota Citizens for the Arts. Uh, who are you guys and what do you guys do? Minnesota Citizens for the Arts is a statewide organization. We've been around for over 40 years. We um, do grassroots organizing and work with the legislature and Congress on issues related to the nonprofit arts. We support um, laws that support charitable giving. We work on state funding issues. Um, we uh, last year supported um, saving the Perpich Center for Arts Education, which had, uh, had some problems. Hmm. Um, we look at uh, whatever supportive policy we can to help nonprofit arts and culture organizations and artists in particular make a living and a life in Minnesota and support our creative economy. I see. I understand, uh, uh, was it Hastings that approached you or, or HPAC that approached you guys about mid-2017? HPAC. HPAC. Um, and for those unfamiliar yet, living in a cave, I mean, come on now, HPAC is pretty well known now, but uh, Hastings Prescott Area Arts Council, um, uh, well known in town for their arts and all they do, they approached you guys about doing a study and, uh, and so take us from there, well, what happened? Well, uh, Minnesota Citizens, Citizens for the Arts is the home of the Creative Minnesota Project. It's a collaborative, collaborative project sure, sure. Um, of all of the state's statewide arts service organizations and foundations that support the arts, like the McKnight Foundation, the Jerome Foundation, uh, the Bush Foundation, the Minnesota State Arts Board and Regional Arts Councils, and a number of others, working together to create hard data about the arts and culture sector um, it started because we were all bemoaning the same thing, which was none of us had access to good hard data for policy making and education about the sector uh, and for advocacy. And mm. you can't really make public policy if you don't know what you're working with. And mm. so we, we needed to set some base, baselines. What, what is the spectrum of the nonprofit arts community? How many people work in nonprofit arts organizations? We didn't know. How many artists are there? We don't know. So uh, the project was put together to um, sort out those things. and. As of this week, we have created 59 separate studies, wow. two statewide, 22 regional, and now 32 local studies, of which Hastings is one. It's quite a spreadsheet. You got a spreadsheet with all those on there? To keep well, actually, track? I was working on the spreadsheet this week. It's giant, so. Yeah, uh, I, bet, I bet. I bet. Well, let's talk about just one line on that spreadsheet, the yeah. one for Hastings here. Yeah. Uh, um, so HPAC approached you, you guys did the study. Um, you know what, and perhaps this is the point to say, should we segue into the presentation at this point? Yeah. Or shall we go, just go for it? All right. Yeah. So feel, let's go ahead and we'll go into the PowerPoint and I may bug you with some questions along the way, but uh, yeah, please uh, show me what you got here and what you guys found. All right, so we've already talked about what Creative Minnesota goals were. Right. The thing I forgot to say is that everything we're talking about today, all those 59 studies, they're available for free for download at creativemn.org. That was one of the commitments we made when we started working on this, that it would all be publicly available nice. and free. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, that's where you can go. Uh, in 2017, we took a new look at artists and creative workers in Minnesota. We used federal data to sort this out. We found there are over 104,000 artists and creative workers in Minnesota, which uh, kind of blew my mind because mm, I thought it was yeah. about ha ha half of that. Um, this, is, this includes people who make their living fully or in part for nonprofits or for profits or even self employed in 41 creative occupations. So this is a list of the 41 creative occupations. And so when you think of arts, you might think right away of painters, maybe singers, dancers, and musicians. Right. But there's actually a pretty large group of occupations that are very dependent on creative work. Even a choir director in a church, that's a creative occupation, you know? Right. Um, sculptors and illustrators, sound engineering technicians, photographers, camera operators, all kinds of folks uh, are included in that artist and creative worker group. On a statewide basis, we found over 16,000 photographers, which surprised me until I thought about all the different ways that we are now using ph photography, whether it's online or for mm -hmm. advertising, wedding photographers, all of these people um, taking photographs for a variety of ways. 
Uh, second, musicians and singers. Third, writers and authors. And fourth, graphic designers. Oh, wow. Graphic designers are way up there. That's a surprise to me. That's not... Yeah. Well, again, you have, you know, people uh, designing print materials, designing mm -hmm. logos. Um, there's design in almost everything we see in yeah, our daily lives. You know, if you're in a if you're in Walmart and you're looking at all the signs around the building, all those signs were designed by a graphic designer. So. True. Wow. Uh, we did a giant survey of individual artists in Minnesota. Um, over 2,000 responded, so it's a really good response rate. Usually, you only need about 400 to get a statistically valid uh, study. We found that about a quarter of artists report they're working full-time in the arts, 40% or so are part-time in the arts and then doing another job. So, so for example, maybe they are a reporter like you in public uh, TV, but maybe on the side they're running a band or they're painting or they're a photographer or something. Oh, right? cool. I'd and be terrible at any of those, are you, including are you, the reporting. So, are you yeah. an artist of any kind? I, I like to write. I do like to write okay, a little bit. Okay, you're uh, writers and authors. That was included. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there you go. You're one of those. Cool. Um, and then we had about a third of the respondents were hobbyists or students or retired. So they're not making any money in the arts and mm. so they're not included in our economic impact numbers. Mm. But that's like me. I spend like $1,000 a year on art supplies, but I'm not selling to anyone. So uh -huh. I, don't, I don't really count in that category. Um, one of the interesting things for Hastings, I think, and this is probably one of the biggest findings for Hastings, was that uh, we asked the artists to identify what do they need most to be successful um, as an artist in Minnesota to make a living and a life. And number one by far response was they need space. Mm. They need space to work, space appropriate for their art form. So if you're a theater artist, you're a musician, you're a dancer, you need spaces where you can rehearse and then spaces you can perform. If you're a visual artist, a jeweler, a potter, all those different kinds of artists that are making things with their hands, they need dedicated studio space with the right equipment, and then they need a place to sell the work that they're making. So like any Makes industry, sense. you know, it has a specific need. Um, and that's where Hastings is way ahead of the rest of the state in having worked with art space to uh, create your building downtown. You're already, I'm, I've been doing these studies in uh, towns all across the state, and they're all just starting to talk about artist live workspaces and trying to develop the local creative economy. So you guys are way ahead of the pack. That's Hastings. You should That's know. Hastings for you. Yeah, not going to lie. So, and then I see it's better also a connection. Yeah, yeah, artists very much want to connect with the communities. Mm -hmm. They have a very, very high rate of volunteerism. And not just as artists, you know, they might be volunteering on the local planning commission or volunteering at their church. They volunteer to a very high degree. Um, they, want, they like to connect to the community and to um, other artists to also. The learning piece is very interesting to me because the older artists all reported, I've spent a lifetime developing these very specific artistic skills and I need to pass them on to the next generation. Mm. The younger generation of artists are all, I want to learn new things. I want to take on new skills. And so that was a lesson learned for the statewide sponsors of this study is, well, how can we develop more mentorships so those skills can be, be passed on from one generation to the next? So it fit together really nicely. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We learned. And then of artists, of course, want to earn more and they want a bigger audience and that's no big surprise. Right, starving artists don't want to be starving too long. Nobody wants to be starving. Nobody wants to be starving Nobody, artists. nobody wants to be a starving artist. So, um, and that, so that's just something I should throw in here is that so often if you're, you're throwing a big event, you might be paying a caterer, you're paying to rent the hall, and then you ask the artist to play for free. <laughs> you're right? right. You're so. What the so heck true. is that? These you're people, they they have houses and mortgage. They have kids. They've got to put food on the table like everybody else. If you're going to throw an event, stop asking artists to do things for free. Let's let's pay everybody. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to throw out there because um, us in the, the TV land, we we do get asked by family and friends, you know, and no offense to anybody out there watching, but uh, once in a while, the, the oh, so and so is getting married this summer. Would you would you just come and just film the ceremony? You yeah, come there's film? a perfect example. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like a day out of my life. You know, people should get paid for their work, that's all. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's funny. It's a good point, very good point. All right, so um, Hastings is a little different than the other places we studied. You're within two counties, and so when we were looking at what is the artist population here, uh, the data only comes to us in uh, county level. So we put together both Dakota and Washington counties to look at the artists that are living kind of in this region. Mm -hmm. So over 11,000 artists are just within these two counties, of which nearly 3,500 wow. are full-time. So that's a really big artist population that's third behind only Ramsey, uh, Hennepin and Ramsey. Wow, yeah, just in Dakota and Washington. Yeah. Wow. So um, that's a huge talent pool to draw from. Yes. It's very exciting. So they're already here. They're already contributing to the economy. 
Um, in terms of density of creative workers in the workforce, um, Dakota County is amongst the higher counties in terms of creative worker density. This map, you, you have to kind of stare at it for a while. It's how many artists per mm -hmm. thousand workers gives us the creative worker density. And of course, Hennepin and Ramsey County are number one, mm. um, but you can see Dakota is uh, dark blue, so that's the yep. next, next density down. Looks very good. Uh, so that's 31 creative workers per thousand workers. In terms of average hourly wages for creative economy workers, this has been an interesting question to look at. You know, there's a lot of debate about what's the, what the minimum wage should be, mm -hmm. what the average wages are around the state. Um, in this area, the um, creative worker wages are slightly below the overall average worker wage, but mm -hmm. only, only very slightly. The differences in other parts of the state are much more dramatic. In very rural areas where the average worker wages are super low, the creative worker wage is always higher. Oh. Um, and one of the reasons is that the creative workers tend to work on a larger geography. So if you're making things, for example, maybe you're a, a potter, you could be selling those things on Etsy.com or other places online. Yeah. So your market is not just town, it's not just the county, it might be the country, it might yeah, be international. True. If you're running that wedding band, um, you're not just going to do the weddings in Hastings. You're probably serving, you know, you're probably running around a couple of counties right. uh, to make your wages. Someone else will be. Don't call me. Don't call me. I won't even. Yeah, yeah. you're not. You're not in a wedding band. <laughs> I yeah, retired right. from that one. Right yeah. Away. So anyway, uh, generally, the in in Greater Minnesota, the creative worker wages are higher, and I think this is probably a function of you're so close to the core metro that you're still part of that mm. economy. You know. Uh, all right, switching gears away from artists and now looking at nonprofit arts and culture organizations okay. like HPAC. Uh, we have 1,601 nonprofit arts and culture organizations in Minnesota. This number alone is always a big shock to people. Wow, yeah. that is a lot of organizations. That is a lot. Like, how does that compare to other states? Uh, how, how many do you know? Well, we're going to get to comparing ourselves oh, to okay. other states later. Jumping I'll ahead. just say right. that we have double the arts economy of Wisconsin because we're awesome. I love Wisconsin, but wow. Minnesota is more awesome, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll get to that. Uh, we might so, lose a few Wisconsin viewers there, but that's okay. You know, we love Wisconsin. Um, of course, uh, in the city of Hastings, we looked at 16 nonprofit arts and culture organizations. So here's just quickly a list of those organizations, and the one that are in the ones mm -hmm. that are a little darker in purple, those are the ones with the larger budgets. Right. Um, so of course, Art Space with the new building downtown. We have Black Dirt Theater also downtown. The Denmark Township Historical Societies, Hastings C then Cable Community Access. Yours truly, yes. Uh, I think those were the biggest uh, in terms of budget. Correct. Well, that's a good list. Don't know how we should. How long do we leave it on the screen so people can scan it? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's you true. Know. That's a good. It's you a long, It's kind of a long list, so. Yeah, we can let them look I for don't a little wanna, while. I don't want to jump away. I can play some music here. <laughs> Okay, I think we're done. Okay, you're done. Okay. <laughs> um, so in Hastings, like the rest of the state, performing arts is by far the most common kind of nonprofit mm. arts organization. You've got your community theaters, you've got bands and choirs, you have dance organizations, uh, so music, dance, theater, they're by far the most common. Uh, what's interesting here is that you have two history and historical preservation uh, organizations for not a big geographic area. Usually, there, at most, there's going to be one. Wow. Um, so uh, that's an interesting highlight of your in your data. Moving on, in terms of budget, this also looks exactly like the state profile. By far, the most common size of organization budget is really tiny. It's twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars or under. Those tend to be groups where they're throwing one fair a year. They do it in the summer, and then oh. they take the winter off and go to Arizona, and then in the summer they come back and they throw another fair. So those, those are the really tiny ones. Um, uh, you're exceptional, though, in having two over $250,000 a year. In the arts, getting over 100000 a year is considered to be a big deal. In, in the business world, mm -hmm. we would probably be thought of as pretty tiny, but in the nonprofit arts and culture world, getting over 100000 is kind of a big deal. And so you have four over uh, 100000 and then two over 250000 Doing well. On a statewide basis, we uh, counted 22 million attendees served annually, which is amazing because there's only 5.5 million people in Minnesota. So that means on average every Minnesotan is experiencing an event at a non nonprofit arts and culture organization four times a year. Of course, that means some people are going eight times a year and some people are only going zero because it's on average. Right, right. But uh, that's a lot. It is a lot. Four times a year on average, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Hastings, you had nearly 50,000 attendees at your 16 nonprofit arts and culture groups which is a very big attendance for a town of this size. 
Great. On a statewide basis, we found just short of 4 million K-12 students served annually by these organizations. And just in Hastings, your organizations are serving ne nearly 12,000 K-12 students a year. And I asked somebody, so how many K-12 students are there in Hastings? And none of us could come up with a number, but they all, they all agreed it was less than this number. Um, on a statewide basis, there's only like 850,000 K-12 kids. So um, kids are also getting about four experiences in the arts annually from the nonprofit arts and culture organizations. And a lot of those experiences are free because of the Legacy Amendment, mm. which passed in 2008, created some dedicated funding for arts uh, experiences. And the kids are benefiting a lot from that. Wow, that's good. That's great to hear. We did a huge uh, audience survey project. Over 6,000 attendees responded to uh, in on-site survey at events. We give them a piece of chocolate if they give us the piece of paper. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And we asked them all kinds of questions. And one of the things we found was that 43% of the attendees have an annual household income. That's everybody in the house of under $60,000 a year. And what's significant about this is that there's this thing where people say, oh, only rich people care or, about or go to the arts. And in Minnesota, that is just completely not true. Yeah. In Minnesota, it's the whole spectrum of the community are attending and enjoying uh, events at nonprofit arts and culture organizations. Oh, well, it's great so, to hear. Yeah, it's good. Good for us. Um, this is the thing that gets local elected officials really excited about the nonprofit arts and culture is that um, on average, uh, somebody attending a nonprofit arts and culture event are going to spend just under $28 per person per event, not including the cost of the ticket. So what's typical in my family is we might hire a babysitter, we get in the car, we buy some gas on the way to the event. We definitely go out to dinner before a play. So if we were going to the Black Dirt, we'd hit the onion first. Oh yeah. Right, and then um, during the play, maybe we'd gra we'd grab a snack uh, at intermission. Afterwards, maybe we'd all go out for a drink afterwards, um, and then we go home and relieve the babysitter. And each step along the way, we're having this little economic interaction with town that wouldn't have happened otherwise. If we'd all stayed home and on the couch and watched The Voice. None of these things would have happened. Right. So the great things about the arts is it gets people up out of their house, out into the community, and spending money. And, and uh, it's oh. not a ton of money per person, but it adds up. You know, oh, we yeah. saw we saw that there was um, like twelve thousand attendees in in Hastings. So that gives you a chance to figure out well, how much is the economic impact then of all of this activity that the nonprofits are creating? And another thing uh, Hastings, I think, is on too is that uh, to invite some artists. Uh, that are come down and spend a bunch of money too. I guess last summer um, for um, Live at the Levee, Eric Paisley, I think his name was, the artist, he came down, he went downtown and spent $10,000 on antiques in the, in the stores. Get around out, Hays really? Oh, yeah. That's cool, I wish I could have followed him around. I, I wonder what he bought. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> So I don't know. Yeah, what did he have with him to like carry all that stuff? With yeah, too, you he know? must have like underlings who like haul his <laughs> yeah. antique treasures around. Yeah, he must. But um, well, that's great though. Yeah, twenty twenty eight dollars a person. That's yeah, more money in the economy. Yeah, and then fourteen percent of that audience is not local, and yeah. not local means not just not from Hastings, not just not from Hennepin or Dakota County. It's not from the seven county metro area. So they're coming from Wisconsin, they're coming from southern Minnesota, wherever they're coming from. And the great thing about that is those guys spend way more. So the non-locals are spending eighty percent more. Wow. And so. We, I've learned at an economic development conference in Fergus Falls that people in greater Minnesota are willing to drive up to two hours for entertainment. And very often, we nonprofit arts organizations, we just market to town or to the county. Right. So thinking about, well, how far out is two hours that we could be marketing the fairs and festivals and things that are happening in town and bringing a bigger audience here, who are then going to spend money at all the restaurants and buy gas in town and go right. buy all those antiques. Right, right exactly. And I bet this is the reason why um, some a lot of businesses in Minnesota were secretly hoping the Vikings didn't make it to the Super Bowl. You know, to have a bunch of people. <laughs> so we get all these out of towners, out of -towners right? Come in, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's almost double. Well, here the Wisconsin people should be happy. I put a picture of Packer fans there. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you lived life dangerously, putting having that in your Minnesota presentation. Well, it's local and non-local, right? Oh, that's well, yeah, the, true. The, the wintry guys are us. Okay, so. So if you add together the economic impact of mm -hmm. the organizations, the audiences that are coming to town and spending money, and then the artists who live in town who are also spending money on things like um, they're renting uh, studio space, they're going to the hardware store to buy paint and hardware, whatever it is for what they're making, 
Um, they're buying, buying vehicles in town. They're buying gas like everybody else. You add all that together, on a statewide basis, it's $2 billion in economic impact every year. Wow. Billion with a B. With a B, yeah. I, I always feel like Carl Sagan. I should say billions you know, yeah. really loudly. <laughs> um, so $2 billion makes Minnesota the epicenter of arts and culture in the Midwest. So we have double the arts economy of Wisconsin, even though we have roughly the same population of 5.5 million people. We have 10.5 times the arts economy of Kansas. We have 12.5 times the arts economy of South Dakota. So if you're a young creative person, you're going to load all your stuff in your car and drive to Minnesota because this is where the cool creative jobs are. Right. I'm from South Dakota, so I have to admit I can I can see I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, South Dakota, but yeah. No, there's great stuff going on there's there. There's a lot of great just, stuff going on it's there. It's just way smaller than yes. what's going on in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a tall bar. So, like I said, we're cool. Yes, very. Uh, and so this is this just lays out the the actual numbers that get you to two billion dollars organization spending plus audience spending plus artists and creative workers spending. <clears throat> so for Hastings. First of all, we looked at what are the organizations and audience spending in town? That's $2.3 million a year. Mm. I think that's a much bigger number than everyone expected. Then we can add to that some part of the $43 million in economic impact generated by the spending of those artists and creative workers, the 11,000 that are in Washington and Dakota County. But because that data sets at the county level, it's kind of hard to figure out, well, how much of that is actually in Hastings? Right. So we just say plus, plus some portion. Gotcha. So this is a, a really impressive number uh, for a town of this size. What's interesting about that, since this was uh, presented to the city council the other day, it generates over 200, about 258000 in state and local government revenue. All that spending, sales tax, income tax, all that kind of stuff, all that boring stuff, um, it adds up to $258,000 a year in Hastings. And then you can also count some of the government revenue generated by that ar ar artist spending in the two counties, but you know we don't have the specifics, so we're just going to move sure, on. Sure, sure, sure. So then we can shift gears again and look at some public opinion polling. Um, yeah. Minnesotans place a much higher value on creativity than people do across the country. There's something special here about Minnesotans' attitude toward the arts and culture. 91% believe that the people cre who create art are contributing something important to the communities in which they live. 90% believe the arts and culture help make Minnesota an attractive place to live and work, which is great. Oops. Uh, this is the thing I was talking about earlier where artists volunteer more than people in other communities. This is also part of a, a public opinion poll, so I threw it in there. Isn't it yeah. sad that only 25% of Americans are volunteers? That is sad. It's You're like, right. come on. Right. You know, at least in Minnesota we're at 35%, but even that, that seems kind of low because everybody I know volunteers. Right. Right? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, pretty much everybody I know volunteers in some capacity or something. Yeah. But 25%, that is pretty low. That's, that's sad. Come on, Americans. Let's, let's do more. Exactly. Um, and then, uh, so we're, we're coming into the end here. So uh, Minnesotans attend arts and culture events more often than other Americans. 76% say yes, I do. I did attend an arts and culture event in the last year with 68% of Americans. And this one's I think is really fun. Minnesotans themselves are more personally involved in the arts and creativity than um, other Americans. That is, we are in the church choir, we are wood carvers, we are dancers, we are singers, we are in local community theater, we are visual artists, we are painters, watercolors, potters, all those things. Um, and we're doing that whether we're making a living at it or not. We are very, very creative as a population. I agree. I, you know, I can totally see that. I, there are so many. Uh, you know, you just see it all over. Yeah, everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. There's and you scratch the surface of, of anybody and you find out that they're actually an artist, even yes. if they won't m admit it. Right. So my father-in-law, Jack, who's 93 years old, he's a wood carver. He makes uh, cowboys and other little figures. Oh, cool. Flat plane carving. It's cool stuff. And I'm like, Jack, you're an artist. And he'll say, no, I'm not an artist. I'm a wood carver. But huh. actually, he, we count him. He's, a, yeah. he's an artist. That's good. You should. So we've just kind of scratched the surface sure. of all the data available on creativemn.org. Um, there's lots more to learn there. Um, there's actually a full, big study, 40 pages, very in-depth on all of these topics. So if you're really inter interested in this kind of thing, you can get it there for free. Great. So, you know, looking at the big picture and all this, uh, with all that said, what is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is the arts and culture in Hastings have an economic impact in town that we have just uncovered for the first time. This is the first time this has ever been looked at. 
Hastings is ahead of a lot of other communities in having already thought about and working on artist and live work housing. Bringing those people to downtown means they're going to start spending money in all the businesses downtown and the restaurants and they will draw other people. So Hastings is ahead uh, of a lot of other parts of Minnesota and that's really exciting. This is a baseline study so we'll come back and look again in six or seven years and see how things have grown with the addition of the art space but I think next time around the numbers are going to be way bigger because you guys are clearly poised for growth yes. in, in arts and culture development. Yeah, and for one, I understand that the, the River Lofts art space, uh, this was done, this study was done before that was right. all, all complete, the, right? So that's not, those, their numbers are not even in this study, right? That's right. So yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Well, Sheila, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of fun. Sheila Smith, Executive Director for the Minnesota Citizens for the Arts, uh, did the Creative Minnesota study here in town. And again, if you are curious, would like to see more in this study, uh, creativemn.org, go to that website right there and you can find lots more information. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.